Good morning, October 27, 2023. The creator, God, lives in us. We are God's creation, God's handiwork, God's miracle, God's masterpiece. We have been given the gift of co-creating. What does that mean? I was talking yesterday on a video about how every word that we speak is recorded. It's recorded in the books of karma. It's recorded in the books of the spirit. It sets something in motion, our words. Now, if you come from the faith movement of Pentecostal or faith-based Christian teachings, you have learned that faith um, that we can produce by speaking the word of God, we can create by speaking the word of God. And there is deep truths attached to that. The word is truth. Therefore, if we speak the word, we create. And everything we speak creates. It carries energy that creates something. I have seen a woman who had stage four colon cancer. Scott and I prayed with her many times in our church. Um, she was told she had months to live, that she would have to have her entire colon removed. She and her husband took the principle of speaking the word of God by faith. And she believed it in her heart. And she spoke it. And she changed her diet tremendously. And she began to take supplements and different things, a lot of things. She hardly ate uh, much food. Um, she drank very healthy mixtures. I don't know what she was doing, but she changed the energy attached to the food that was going inside of her. And she also spoke the word of faith into existence, completely healed. Colon wasn't removed. She's alive and well today. 20 years later, at least, 20 years, no, 25 now, going strong. What a testimony. So I was saying yesterday, our thoughts, every thought, every word, and every action produces a reaction in the spirit. It produces something in the spirit. It sets something in motion, energy in motion. Now, the important part of that creation power that we have is the intention behind it. The intention.
what intention is driving the creative power of our thoughts, our words, and our actions. Whatever the intention is behind our thoughts, our words, and our actions will be what we create in the spiritual realms, in the karmic realms. You know, the Bible speaks about being a discerner of spirits. The first person, the primary path of discerning of spirits should be in self-awareness, in self-awareness. To ask God, to give us the discernment of spirits. What spirit am I doing this in, God? What spirit am I thinking that in? What spirit am I saying that in? What spirit am I co-creating? Because everything we do sets something in motion, energy in motion. And what intention is behind it? And that's why we pray like David, oh God, search me and know me. Search my heart, oh God. See if there be any wicked way in me. See if there be any unclean intention in my heart. Of course there is, and God will show us. And we take that self-awareness path. This is what it means to be conscious. Partly, this is what it means to be self-aware. See if there be any wicked way in me. Cleanse me. Purify me. Give me your heart, O oh God. This is why Jesus instructs in the New Testament with the measure that you judge, whether with thought, word, or action, the same will be measured back to you because we have now set something in motion in the spirit. It is a primary part. It's the primary foundation of a pure walk with God, to walk with God this way, to have discernment of spirits, our own. What spirit is the intention behind my thoughts, my words, my actions, because they are creating and setting something in motion? And that is the frequency with which those thoughts, those words, and those actions will create. Now, if I am coming in a spirit that is in jealousy, anger, lust, seduction, um, selfish intention, if I'm doing something with a lie attached or it's sneaky and I'm being covert, anything, if I'm trying to get something from someone, if I'm trying to really hit somebody with a dagger, but I'm sounding so sweet, it doesn't matter because it's the intention behind what I'm doing, which is the spirit behind my action, my thought, and my word. And it is the energy that it carries, which is the frequency it's bringing into that action. The frequency of hell or of heaven. Which realm am I in when I am thinking, speaking, and acting? Everything Jesus talked about had to do with this. When he said the kingdom of heaven, are we bringing the kingdom of heaven? Are we creating forth the kingdom of heaven with God? Or are we creating 
and expanding and bringing others into hell, bringing ourselves. Where are we abiding? Wow. Wow. What is the energy behind, or let's say the spirit, if you if we want to talk Christianese, what is the spirit behind what we are thinking, speaking, and doing? Because that's where the real stuff happens. These are the unseen realms. These are the realms where we say, I have faith or I don't have faith. Because he who speaks without pure intention, and we all do it, but it's the self-awareness path, the conscious self-awareness path with the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Truth, to show us, to humble us, that we may repent and ask God for a pure heart, for a pure intention. It is the intention of our heart and our mind behind our thought, word, and action that will create in spiritual realms. Are we creating more of hell? Or are we creating more of the kingdom and bringing the kingdom wherever we go? Lord, we ask for the discernment of spirits first and foremost in ourselves. Bring back our innocence, oh God. Give us a pure heart, oh God. Purify our intentions. Heal us, oh God, that we may walk in a straight, innocent, and pure intention. What is healing? What is healing? Inner healing can only happen in an unseen place. It's not like somebody comes inside of us and they put their hand into our spiritual heart and they massage it or they put ointment on it or they come into our mind. So how do we get inner healing? It happens in an unseen place. The same places that produce our intentions, that co-create in the spiritual realms. Why is there so much hell in the earth right now? Because humanity is co-creating and producing more and more of it through the unseen places, through intention. Oh God, give us discerning of spirits in ourselves. Make us conscious and aware. This is the awakening of the sleeper the awakening of the sleeper who awakens from sleep and begins to see that the spiritual realms are first and foremost, they are primary. And everything manifests into the 3D. What is the intention of our heart? Remove the delusions, O oh God, from our minds. This is what this verse means. For the God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers. This isn't, unbelievers are not people who haven't asked Jesus Christ into their heart. That's not an unbeliever. An unbeliever is one who does not act according to, to this law, these spiritual laws I just spoke about in the spiritual realms. Because if we do believe, we are no longer blind. 
But if we trample on these laws that are unseen, and we still move in impure, unholy, and wicked intention, dark intentions from our minds and our hearts, through our thought, word, and action, and believe that we are going to still get an advance in the spirit, we lie to ourselves. And this is a blindness over the mind. Therefore, we do not have faith. We do not believe. We can say that we believe, but then we lie too. And this is not for shame or condemnation. This is to bring forth the spirit of truth. For the spirit of this age, the spirit of this world, where is the world? It's without and it's within. The spirit of this world has blinded the minds of unbelievers. So that they cannot see. I'll read that scripture. Sorry to take so long. Second Corinthians. I've been in Second Corinthians a lot. The spirit or the God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of the gospel that displays the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. Wow. Satan, who is the God of this world, has blinded the minds of those who don't believe. They are unable to see the glorious light of the good news. What is that good news? What is the good news? The good news is the news that we can be in Christ. And in my opinion and experience, that's a continuum. It's not a prayer. It's a continuum. It's a state of consciousness, conscious awareness of being in Christ. And so it's not a ticket to heaven when I die, but it's a continual access to the kingdom of heaven in every micro moment. So let's take it down. Let's break it down. When I do something to my husband, with the wrong intention. I speak a judgment at him. I want to hurt him. I want to just, I want to get him to do something, whatever. And so I speak a word of judgment to him. Wrong intention, ungodly intention, unholy intention, right? Even if it sounds like I'm trying to motivate him or, you know, I can flower it up a bit to motivate him, whatever it is that I'm trying to do. Wrong intention, wrong spirit, okay? That sets something in motion, not the kingdom. It activates demonic activity. Goes into his heart, his mind, right? Does not produce the kingdom. And it stirs up a realm of hell. Small little act of judgment, right? I'm not in Christ when I'm doing that. Now, if my husband is in Christ, he can recognize, he can discern the spirit, and he can correct me as a husband should. He can correct me in kindness and in his own identity. and not be affected by it. But we're talking real life, right? So oftentimes it doesn't happen. As we grow and we heal, it can happen and it does happen. And then his correction can help me grow, come into the truth and repent. So I wasn't in Christ when I said it, when I did it, but I can turn and I can repent 
and realize the spirit in which I said it, the intention in which I said it, and I can then repent. This is being in Christ. This is walking with Christ in the spirit. And then we can get to the root of why I said what I said. And I can share my heart vulnerably. And then my husband can take the leadership in caring for my heart. Whatever that need or that fear or whatever it is. And we can come together as one and he can lead me as a husband should. <sighs> Into paths of righteousness safely. Because I'm not meant to lead my husband. It's just an example how we process through in the kingdom together in Christ. God give us the discernment of spirits. God awaken us to the blindness that has blinded our minds to not believe, to not live by faith to live recklessly in spiritual realms, activating off all kinds of things that do not produce the kingdom of heaven, but produce lower realms, energies, and vibrations. This is why we dwell down here. What is the energy? What is the intention? The root intention at which we are activating our thoughts, words, and actions. Are they coming from the incorruptible seed of the word of God inside of us? We have that promise. We have the incorruptible seed to produce life and ever giving life. Oh God, let this beautiful, powerful, ever life-giving seed emanate through all of our thought, action and word. Let it bring the healing that brings us out of hell's realms into heaven's intentions and the spirit of the energy of heaven, which is the Holy Spirit which is the life-giving spirit, the creative spirit of God. Open our eyes, our spiritual eyes, to see that we may see the light of the glorious good news, which is the way, by taking the way of truth into the ever-giving life of the kingdom. This is Christ. It is way bigger than saying a prayer to a man that died on a cross. It is living in the spirit. It is living in the faith that this Christ has been given to each one so that we may be victorious to bring the kingdom in every moment and to expand and enlarge. How is this kingdom enlarged? It is expanded and enlarged through Christ in us. What? Yes. We are co-creators with God by the power of the Holy Spirit in us. Are we bringing hell? Or are we bringing heaven? As mental illness arises and surfaces in the earth, if we are in realms of hell in the mind, 
we are going to try to grab other people and bring them into our hell with us because who wants to be in hell alone? It's a freaking scary place. It's a place of torment. And so this is why I talk about narcissism a lot because it is the core of the ego, which is the very opposite of who we are in Christ and the image of God in which we were created. The core of the ego in this world, it's attached to this world. It's anchored to this world. That's why we always hear in the Bible, come out of the world, come out of the world. What does that mean, come out of the world? You can't leave this world out here. This world out here is a movie to project back to us what's happening in the world in here. And the character in that world is our ego. The character, the main character in that world is our ego. And Christ in us is saying, come out from among them. Come out from the world. Be not of this world. Come and live by my spirit that I may give you liberty and freedom to walk in heaven's realms and to bring heaven to earth and to do what you see me doing and you see the Father doing, which is bringing this light of the kingdom everywhere through the energy and intention of what you're creating in every moment. And so as mental illness increases, comes to the surface, it's all been hidden through compacted traumas and all the things that have happened in this outer world that have affected the inner world. Mental illness has come into the surface and it, we haven't begun to see the fullness of that. The God of this world has blinded the minds of unbelieving, I'll say, because we can't put believers and unbelievers in a box. Believing is a micro moment by micro moment, conscious presence. When we don't walk in faith, we do not believe in the unseen realms. When I judge my husband, I'm not believing. No shame, it's all part of the path. But I'm not walking in faith, therefore my mind has been blinded because I think I can just speak that thing out and there isn't gonna be a consequence. I'm not gonna reap what I sowed. That's unbelieving, that's pretentious. That is being led by the enemy of my soul. My mind has been blinded when I do that. And I'm using myself as an example so that I'm not talking at you. In that case, the God of the world has blinded the, my mind in unbelief to keep me from seeing the light of the gospel of the glorious Christ, who is the image of God in me. And this is my true identity, the Christ in me the hope of glory. And so even in my act of judgment to my husband, I still have another chance to walk in redemption because now I am able to repent when I see it. But it's when I decide not to, because if say my husband doesn't have the courage to come to me and correct me and he doesn't bring it out and tell me that I did something wrong, I now have to decide I'm gonna say that I did something wrong. And I created something in spiritual realms with my intention. Hey, I judged you. I was trying to get something out of you. I was moving in fear. I was driven by unbelief. Please forgive me. I'm so sorry. I spoke from darkness. My intention was darkness. My heart was in darkness. My mind was in darkness. My mind was in unbelief. Okay, that's truth. When Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life, I'm breaking it down to a micro moment in our lives. In religion, we look at Jesus and we say, he is the truth. This man that died. We can look at it like that, but we have to go deeper. 
Christ in us calls us to walk in paths of truth, that we may be led into the righteous kingdom of God in every micro moment of our lives and live by faith. That our hearts may be cleansed, that our minds may be renewed, that we may bring the kingdom in every moment. And that that creative power may flow, bringing the kingdom, expanding the kingdom here on earth as it is in heaven. It is a continual path. Christ is the continuum of the kingdom and he shows us the way inside. So even when we mess up and we move in the wrong intention, we still have the ability and the gift of the kingdom to repent, to make it right, to redeem it, to ask for mercy, not just from God, but from the other. And what a power that comes with repenting. You know, it's not enough to say to somebody, I love, I love you so much. I thank God for you. You've been so good to me. If we have hurt or abused somebody, we must redeem that. We must say, I did this wrong to you. That is the full redemption. That is nullifying the spiritual atmosphere and energy and intention in which we hurt that other person. But that's where pride rises up from the ego and says, no, I'm not admitting what I did. No way. Not doing it. And this is the challenge in every moment. To live in the kingdom or to live blinded by our own minds. to misuse, to abuse another is to set something in motion in the spirit that is causing suffering on another. It's malicious. And it brings back unto us a darkness of torment of hell. It's karmic. It sets something in motion in the spirit. And if we can't yet come to the place to see what that brings into the spirit realm back to us, and then when we are in torment in our lives and we're experiencing hell and we wonder what is going on, why? God helps us to search our hearts and minds that we may come into Christ, that we may come into living in the spirit. The good news is that we can clear, you know how they say clear the air? <laughs> That's the spiritual realms. Clearing the air is really doing the work in the spirit to clear the air of these things. And that's when we're living by faith when we do the real stuff. <sighs> so, I've been talking about narcissism a lot because it's coming to the surface. And there is um, so much happening in the outer world to cause so much fear and torment and lack and demonic upheaval. So therefore, this is happening on the personal level. So where can we be safe? in Christ, in every situation, in Christ.
Hell is not a fun place to live. And so we are all being delivered out of these realms. This is the opportunity being given to humanity right now to be delivered from hell. And other people's hells are going to affect us. We need to stay in Christ. We need the wisdom of God. God has removed people from my life and I struggled with that so deeply. And God said to me recently, you know, it's okay for me to protect you from other people's hells. I'm protecting you. And it's okay for me to protect you. The Father said that to me. It's okay for me to protect you. Let me protect you. Stay hidden in me. I know what I'm doing. Rest in that. And as I've seen God do that, I've seen so much toxicity fall away, so much more clarity come. I've seen so much um, codependency fall away, so much more dependency on God and just resting in God. Quietness, simplicity, gratitude, fullness of the kingdom. That statement really is true. Let go, let go, and let God do what he has to do. This is faith. When we grip and we hold on, we try to control, fix, do, change another. We're in deception. Our intention, we're setting intention into the spirit realm that's going to bring chaos. I love this scripture. It says, wherever there is such great instruction in the word of God. James 3.16 such a spiritual principle. For wherever, wherever you have envy, jealousy, and selfish ambition or selfish intention, you're going to find disorder and every evil practice of every kind. Wow. So wherever the intentions of our heart and our mind start with envy, jealousy, selfish ambition, just that one right there. If our intentions start with selfish ambition, you're going to have chaos and disorder and evil. Whoa. We could all really just stay in personal prayer at every moment, just reading that. Because how much do we do out of selfish ambition? No shame, because these truths drive us into God's heart more, all the more. Oh God, the fear of the Lord comes up, the fear of God's spiritual law. And I want to be in Christ. Oh God, I want to be found in Christ. I don't want to be in that chaos, that toxicity, that, that torment of hell. It all happens and originates in the spiritual realms and the unseen. Keep me hidden in your heart, oh God, because I don't even know the ambitions of my own heart because of my self-delusions. Give me the discerning of spirits in myself. Help me to consciously walk with my eyes open, to have eyes to see. This alone will keep me. This path keeps us busy enough to walk with God without judging others and focusing on others. 24-7, we can walk this way and we can let go of what everybody else is doing. That's the intention God wants to bring us to. God will take care of the others. But may our hearts be pure. May our intentions be aligned with the Spirit of God. May they be in full truth, without hidden 
motives. May they be backed by heaven. May we follow Christ and do what the Father is doing. This Father of lights, who is full of light and in, in him is no darkness. What a promise. What a path. Power accompanies this path. We don't have to move in our own power. We can't. Power accompanies this path and the vibration we give off is of heaven. And that in itself is power. It is light. It is love. And this is the deception of religion that, or of the new age or whatever other mindsets is that we can move in wrong intention and still bring this heavenly power. No, we must be self-consciously aware, walking with the discerning of spirits, with the spirit of God, humbly, because we don't even know the hidden intentions of our heart. This is when we walk in this power that someone can just brush by us and the virtue of heaven can flow out of us and heal them. It all happens from our personal path, the inner path. That power is boundless. That love has no end. And that love will express itself to all the different people in our lives the way God wants it to be expressed not the way our carnal, natural mind thinks it needs to be expressed. Sometimes that love has to express itself geographically farther away than we intend or want it to be. God may separate us from someone geographically, but our love, the love of God, may be coming forth in a very powerful way through us, touching that other. And I don't have to know, and they don't have to know, because God knows, as long as I'm walking this path out in truth. And that incorruptible seed is bringing life-giving power to everything it touches in the spirit. That is faith. That is the highest faith. God, give us the mind of Christ to understand this, that we may walk this path, this higher path in the spirit. The one that brings heaven to earth. The one that lives in the energy of heaven. Where signs and wonders and miracles follow and glory is all around. Let us be content with this path no matter who knows, this personal path with you, the most powerful one. Bring us into Christ in every moment, in every micro moment. Make us self-aware, we pray, that our hearts may be cleansed and our minds may be renewed, transforming Transforming, transformation process can happen in us, O oh God, by the power of the Holy Spirit in every moment. For eternity is in our hearts. In every moment is eternity. And every moment is meant to be in Christ. Open our minds to these truths, O oh God. As you deliver us out of darkness, attached to this world, and translate us into your glorious light of your kingdom. Hallelujah. For this we give thanks over and over and over again.